In 2006, there were 110 deaths due to drowning in Virginia. More than half, 54% of these deaths were in natural bodies of water, rivers, lakes, and the bay. Males are three times more likely to drown than females. Virginians aged 15 to 24 experienced the highest number of fatal drownings in the state. And if you don't know how to swim... Imagine yourself with your arms tied behind your back and your legs bound. Because, I mean, that's how it felt for me because I didn't know how to swim. I was kicking and I was screaming. I heard about her death on the news. Um, and it was very, very traumatic for me. I remember standing in the bathroom, brushing my teeth and hearing her name come across the news and then screaming and hollering. The water was so deep, it just made a ploop sound. So then I knew I was in real trouble as I looked up at the ceiling of the water. My son was Josh. Um, Josh was 16 years old and he drowned on a lake in Michigan because he could not swim. Hi, I'm Matt Weeders, catcher for the AAA Norfolk Tides baseball team. All the stories you just heard are true. Each one briefly chronicles a real event. The point of this video is to help you make sure that you don't become a statistic. I'm Terrence Affer Anderson. The Norfolk Department of Public Health, the City of Norfolk Aquatics Division, and the Norfolk Tides baseball team present Waterline Teens Keeping Heads Above Water, a water safety awareness and instruction video developed for teenagers and their parents. Do you know how to swim? Did you know that in the five-year period between 2002 and 2006, 516 Virginians died from drowning? That's more than 100 per year. Drowning is the fifth leading cause of unintentional injury death in Virginia. In 2006, 35 Virginians were hospitalized for drowning-related events at an average cost of $11,954 each person. And each person stayed an average of five days in the hospital. Not a great way to spend your summer, is it? So we want you to be prepared. We want to make certain that you don't become a statistic. When it comes to water safety awareness and learning how to swim, we want to make sure that you, like Norfolk Tides baseball catcher Mike Wheaters would say, hit one out of the park. So we're going to give you some helpful tips on what you can do to prevent drowning and what to do if you find yourself in trouble in the water. But first, let's take a little bit more of a look at these stories that you just saw at the beginning of the video. We're going to start with Brandon D. Goodman. Brandon is going to share an experience that he had at the age of nine years old, an experience that still haunts him today. At that time, I slid into the water uh, when going to get my flotation device. And I mean, the only way I can pitch or help you to get a feel for how I felt at the time was if you imagine yourself with your arms tied behind your back and your legs bound, because I mean, that's how it felt for me, because I didn't know how to swim. I was kicking and I was screaming and, you know, I, I was moving my arms and I was moving my legs, but it didn't do me any good because I didn't know how to pull myself to the surface. Um, within that time frame, I was actually able to come to the surface one time. When I came to the surface, I screamed for help. And nobody came to help me. And then I just sunk. I mean, you know, just like a ship sinking in the water. I just went straight down. I was screaming, so water started filling up in my lungs. Um, I was sucking in water, and I was in the pool for uh, what was estimated to be between 15 and 18 minutes, where I should have been declared dead while under the water. For me, I saw what appeared to be a, a picture of myself. A, it was like an angel for me. But it, he looked ex exactly like me. He was just all in white, 100% like I was. And he just kind of swam around me. And he was under the water up until the point where I, I blacked out. And even when I blacked out, I still saw him in my mind. I just couldn't see him with my eyes anymore. The next thing I remember from that point was me waking up in a hospital. Brandon's story gets your attention, doesn't it? Well, wait until you hear from Tamisha Good. At age 15, Tamisha lost a very dear friend. It affected her both negatively and positively. Check it out. She was about 14 or 15 at the time. Supposedly, she fell off the raft. Um, 
and fell in the 17 feet of water and was pinned underneath a pipe that was in the lake um, there. She, um, she supposedly had knew how to swim as well, um, but in 17 feet of water, if she panicked at night, anything would have, was possible. I know that now. From that point, uh, the next following days, uh, they were pretty good for me until I actually saw her body laying in the coffin and how swollen she was from being in the water so long uh, and being pinned, I guess. Uh, I, I completely lost it then when I saw her body like that. My daughter is five years old. Uh, she learned how to swim when she was four. I got her into it in January of last year, 2008. Uh, I did it because I thought it was a good idea for her to learn how to swim. You can bet that Tamisha's daughter, Jalen, is a pretty good swimmer. If you are like me, you like having big fun on the water. But having big fun doesn't mean taking unnecessary risks. Here's why. This is George Eason's story. There was a rope hanging off, dangling off the side of the hill. And it kind of seemed like a cliff because it was about a 10 foot drop to the water. And this is before the rapids, so that's the deepest point. Now, the rope was dangling about five or six week, uh, uh, feet, so it was out of reach. So we were trying to figure out who's gonna be the hero to go out and get the rope so we can swing for a little while and have a good time and then go on our way. So of course, uh, I said, oh, I can do it. I figured I had the strongest grip, so. I ran and jumped, but there was two problems. One problem was we had been drinking beer, and the other problem was I cannot swim. So when I ran and jumped to grab the rope, I was trying to hold it tight so I could swing back and forth and the guys could, we'd be able to play with the rope. But what happened was my hand slid down to the first big knot went through it, and the second knot, and the third one. And then when it hit the fourth knot, I was really in trouble. So I think I took a deep breath, I'm not sure, because I knew I was ready to fall. And in horror, I fell into the water. Pretty scary, wasn't it? George survived. But as Tamisha has already shared with us, some stories around the water don't have such happy endings. Before we get to some water safety and drowning prevention tips, we want to share just one more story with you, one from the perspective of a parent who lost a teenage son. This is Josh's story, as told by his mother, Wanda Butts. I did not know that Josh was going to a place where there was water, where he would be around water and that he would be swimming when he left me that day. He was just going to spend the night, and he, as he had done before. Well, it ended up that um, they went to a lake. Josh was on a raft, an inflatable raft, I was told, never been there, but I was told that when he was initially on the raft, you could see the bottom of the, of the water. So somehow, the raft he was on floated out and the lake had a huge drop off. So Josh went off the drop off. And Josh didn't know how to swim. He never had a swimming lesson. The Josh Project in Toledo, Ohio teaches children how to swim. We started four years old. We go four to however old they want to be. We teach them how to swim for free. The biggest sale that we have for the Josh Project is that the parents look at me and they know that they don't want to be in my shoes because I'm going to feel the hurt and the pain for the rest of my life for my son. Swimming is like a basic life skill. You have food, shelter, clothing, swimming. Yes, swimming should indeed be treated like a basic life skill. Wanda's story is one that we want to make sure other parents avoid having. Children, especially teenagers, should know how to swim. Let me introduce you now to Dan Jones, Division Head, Norfolk Aquatics and Recreational Activities. Dan is going to give you some important information on how to protect yourself when you're in the water, things that you should make special note of. Okay, you've already heard about the number of drownings that have occurred in Virginia. Let me share with you how drownings affect the entire country. Approximately 4,500 Americans die from drowning every year. 16,000 Americans who are near drowning victims require hospitalization. 
Drowning in the United States is the fourth leading cause of unintentional injury death. People drown while swimming, boating, and even bathing. We're gonna provide you with some instruction and demonstrations on how to recognize and prevent a water emergency.